Today on The Garage Engineer, we update our 3 horsepower boat motor and do some updates to our 7.5 foot dinghy. Well, the ding is out of storage. We'll clean her up and let's see what she looks like. So she survived the winter pretty well. Let's get some of these leaves off. There you go. I don't really see anything wrong with her. No cracks or holes or anything. Just needs to be cleaned off. Welcome to Garage Engineer. I'm Dennis. This is a fun video. We are pulling out the seven and a half foot dinghy that we built last summer. If you want to see that build, uh, check out the videos. I'll put a link up into the screen above here. Also, a part of that build, we did fix up an old 1967 Evinrude three horsepower motor that powered our dinghy. Now, I won't spoil the surprise, but we did do, take it out on for a test run and we had some complications, but check out the videos and it'll be interesting to see. In those videos, I had some great comments from viewers, and I decided to make a recap video and taking into account some of the items that people had mentioned in the videos. So here are the uh, a few of the things that uh, I like to get done. We'll see if we can get it all in this video or not. Um, we've got we got to give the boat a name. The keel was one of the top suggestions. They said that will help keep the boat going straight. Uh, definitely cup holders for when we're out on a hot lake. Uh, we need something cold to drink. And the problem we had, uh, I'll give away one of the videos, is the reason we weren't moving as fast is because I sheared the pin. If you check out that video of me riding around and you can see actually in the video the exact moment that I sheared it.
We got our keel attached. She's nice and straight. And she's on there pretty secure. I'm not, I mean, we're not going to take her on 80 mile an hour uh, trips. So uh, the screw should be strong enough to hold. And the caulking I used, if you're interested, is I had some leftover RV uh, roof sealant. It's more of a water caulking. I don't, I'm not sure if it ha how much of adhesive it is. Um, but we're just trying, the screws are mechanically holding it, and the caulking was more just keep the water out. I don't know if you can see where he go. We've got there he is. A hornet or wasp, I guess it's a wasp we've made mad. His nest is inside the boat. I don't know if you can see. Down in there. Oh he's mad. Let's let him calm down a little bit. So you can get a little closer. You can see right there. It's his nest. So we gotta evict him. And we're gonna let him calm down a little bit before we evict him. So I decided to name the boat after my wife. Her name is Farah. So to make it more boat sounding, I put the bell at the end of it. So uh, it's going to be the Farah Bell is the official name of the seven and a half foot dinghy. So the final part of our boat repair, we're going to fix the boat motor. You can see in our last year's video how we got the boat on the water and the motor running, but we ran into a little problem. I grounded the propeller into some rocks and that broke the shear pin and that's why we weren't moving it in the video like we should have been. So today we are going to uh, repair the shear pin and test the motor. So I went ahead and already pulled off the propeller because I wanted to measure the shear pin before I ordered it and when I pulled it out this is what uh, happened. Uh, you can see the shear pin did its job and broke into three different pieces. Here's, here's one piece. You can see the other two pieces are inside. One there and one there. So the shear pin did its job and broke when it was supposed to to protect the uh, motor. So that's what we need to fix today. Some people have suggested using nails um, or other pieces of metal, but I'm not sure what the strength of this metal shear pin is, so I bought OEM parts. If you want to know the part number, it is 203230 is the shear pin part. And I went ahead and ordered two, and they are expensive. If you get it from the dealer, it was about $15 a piece. I ended up finding two for $15 online. Um, but it's the exact same. I'm sure you, if you can figure out what type of metal this is, then uh, you could probably make your own maybe, um, but I, I didn't want to take a chance, so we went ahead and got two, one for a spare. We're going to make it finger tight, and then we're going to back off just a little bit. I'm reusing the linchpin because I'm not sure if this is stainless um, and I don't have a stainless one so we're just going to use the original one for now. Now what we need to do is just put on the rubber cap, cover up the nut, and we are done. So in the last video when we were working on the boat motor, when I mixed the uh, two cycle fuel, I found the SA30 with non-detergent, which is going to be similar to what they had back then, uh, and that's what it specifies 
on the instructions for the Evinrude. However, some people said that was not the right oil and to mix and to get the what the current version is, which is the TC-W3, which is what I've got. So we're going to try that this time and see how that works. But I still believe the SA30 non-detergent is what they had back then and it works just fine. This might be improved, but uh, I think either would work in a pinch. We'll give this a try. Also, the motor instructions say it runs off a 50 to 1 mixture. People in the forums were saying you should go all the way down to 26 to 1. I'm, not, I'm probably going to go somewhere in between there uh, in the 40s. I'm not going to I think it needs a little bit more oil since it's an older motor. But uh, I'm not going to go all the way down to the 26 to 1 mixture. So we'll see how that works. The back of direction says the 40 to 1 mixture for one gallon of gas is 3.2 ounces. So we'll go ahead and pour that right now. And I like to mark it here, tell him what it is, so we'll put that at 40 to 1 ratio. I don't know if you picked up, I'm hearing a clinking sound somewhere up here, so I might uh, take off the cover and kind of check it out. Also, the idling is not idling as low as I'd like to, um, so I'm going to work on that. But other than that, we got her up and running again, propellers working very well, uh, so now we just got to get her on the water. Well, we are back. We are at the Olympic Rowing Venue in beautiful Gainesville, Georgia. And we're here to check the seven and a half foot dinghy upgrades and to run the boat motor some more. I think we've got it tuned uh, pretty well, so we'll check that out. As you see behind me, that's the judging tower for the uh, rowing events. And hopefully we'll be able to take the boat across there and we'll take a view of it from the water side. So we're about to get unloaded here on the boat ramp, but you can see the water is considerably higher than it was the last time we were here. We've had a lot of good rain this year. Uh, I don't think they'll affect us any, but let's get the boat unloaded and get in the water. I'm going to add a rope to the uh, motor support and then to the boat. So if the motor happens to fall off, we can possibly save it, or it might just turn into a big boat anchor and just sink the whole entire thing. So I'm not sure, but maybe a little bit of safety to, or security would be better than nothing. I had to turn around, I was having steering issues, so we're going to be going backwards uh, like a rowboat uh, for this adventure. We're going to turn up the speed a little bit. I'm having issues steering. I can't get it to steer smoothly because now I figured out the motor is hitting the keel. So we're going to have to make adjustments to our design 
uh, on our keel next time. I'm having to lift it up and turn it once it gets past the midline of the boat. So that's something we'll just have to adjust. That was great. Uh, that's pretty successful. I think I would have had a better job uh, keeping balance and steering if the uh, motor wasn't hitting the keel. I think that was causing a lot of the problems. Um, and I didn't have that smooth motion, so I was always having to lean forward, which was offset my balance, it, just to uh, lift the motor up and turn it uh, around the keel. Uh, so, other than that, the motor works. It's great. I'm, I'm excited about that restoration and the boat. It works still. It's been a year. I've only used it a couple times, but it's supposed to be a uh, fun thing, not a workhorse. So, as they say, we are now back on the hard, which means we're back at the shop. Uh, post analysis of the trip, the everything worked flawlessly. Well, I should say I was very happy with it. The, uh, it didn't leak after we put in the uh, keel. The motor pulled over after one pull every time. So I'm very excited that it worked very well. The only problem I had while I was out there is I couldn't steer. So here's the problem. As we're turning the boat port and starboard, the front of the uh, lower end unit of the motor is hitting the keel right there. The bottom's all right, it's just it's hitting right there. So you know what we need to do? Let's just cut it out. All right, now that we've got it cut out, let's give her a test. So we last left off modifying the keel so the motor wouldn't hit it. But I wasn't happy with our last trip on the lake, so I wanted to make a few modifications and I'm going to go back on the lake uh, next week. It's Saturday and I had a slow time in the shop, so I wanted to uh, make a modification on the handle since it was breaking. So before we just had this conduit pipe, but wherever we drilled the uh, screw holes, uh, it was bending and breaking. So I wanted to strengthen it up a little bit. I got a piece of uh, 1 8 bar stock. I'm going to spray paint it just to make it a little bit less rust resistant. Um, and I just drilled in holes. And then just to be fancy, I, I took the old handle and made it folding like how the original is folding. I know this is kind of backyard's mechanic, but it works. So at night sometimes I think about projects and just how I can make them better do something different. Well, I was thinking about the uh, keel on the boat here. And we we cut the notch out of the keel so that it can move left and right but I didn't even take into consideration if we need to do reverse and, and turn the motor completely around so I uh, went back the next day and made a little bit of modification as you can see I cut out a little bit more here and um, compared to what it was before so that the uh, prop the, the rear end of the prop could swing all the way around and we can have reverse now so I think I think, cross our fingers, is we're going to have a successful day. We're going to go out on the lake next week. Uh, hopefully it won't be raining, but we will be going out. Okay, it's been about a week since the last time we were on the water, and I had to get back on just to show that it actually works fully. Uh, well, I hope it works fully today.
We got her going. She can move. Oh, don't want to move too fast. I can't go too fast on this thing because I uh, don't want to get too unbalanced, but uh, she's running pretty well. I'm pretty excited about that. She's not hitting the rudder, so that, or the fixes that we made are pretty good. It's much easier to drive face it backwards, kind of like in a dinghy, a rowboat. It's easier to control the motor and your balance got to keep your balance uh, so you don't tip over. But yeah, this motor is plenty fast enough for it. I can't even put it on full speed. And if I try to turn, it'll tip me over. So this is good, just good enough. I like the handle too. It turned out pretty good. We ended up painting it black. I've got a pivot point here so we can fold it up. What a great adventure. Uh, we've successfully uh, navigated the waters of Lake Lanier. The boat didn't sink, didn't leak, and the motor runs wonderful. Uh, thank everyone who came along on this ride with us. The build of the boat and repair of the motor has been a great adventure. It's been requested by a lot of people about plans for this boat. I did get inspiration online, however I did draw up a set of plans that if you're interested to save you some time of having to guess measurements, it's all in here about cutting the sides and the transom out uh, and some of the spreader dimensions. If you're interested in getting that, go to thegarageengineer.com and the set of plans are uh, available on the website. And remember the ABCs of making, always be creating. Till next time. Thank mm -hmm. you.